Um, so, so this is a Pegasus tutorial we're going to do now. And um, what this is, this is the same one as we have in our documentation, right? So uh, if we, uh, let me just get out of this uh, presentation mode a little bit here. I'll move this one. Um, so on the website, on the Pegasus website, right? So let's go to the Pegasus website. Um, okay, if you go up to learn and the user guide, uh, in here there's a tutorial, right? So this is the same one that you can run at any time by yourself or, or have uh, you know, colleagues do, for example. And uh, this one is uh, it's a Docker container that you just run locally. We do not need that today. Today we're going to have a hosted version of this, so you don't. You, all you need is a web browser to follow along. And uh, but but I'm just telling you that this is where you can find it in the future if you want to be able to go back to it or again share it with other people. Hey, right. so um, uh, so it's the same one. And um, and um, it is again Docker based, so everybody here will have their own little instance. The way we're going to do this though is that you're going to go to this uh, URL here, and I'm going to paste that into the into the chat as well. We'll do it. We'll do it Zoom chat, and we'll do it in the Pug channel. Right. So where that link takes you is into a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet. Right? And there's, I see already people that figure this out. What I wanted to do is on the left here, put find an empty box, put your name on there. All right. And once you have claimed a slot, then you can go to the right and click on that link. Right. So in my case, you know, I'm, I have, to, and the only thing that's the real difference between this is the URLs is the, the number, but that means that, that that instance is going to be yours and, 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 you know, not stepping on each other's toes. So everyone on the call should be linking to that uh, and putting in their name right. and then trying that link out. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I, uh, and while you do that, I'm going to keep on talking, but, but uh, you know, this should, should work out. Right, and uh, let's go back here while we do this. All right, so where you will end up is in a Jupyter notebook. And if you haven't used a Jupyter notebook before, we're, we're going to you know step through this together as well. So, um, you know, if you are not sure about it, just wait, and I'll 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 do it on my screen, and you can do it at the same time on yours. And um, but a few things I want to point out here. One is um, this Docker container, it is uh, uh, demo purposes only really. You know, when, when we run real workflows, most of the time we have a dedicated submit host and there's no need, uh, like you don't have to use Docker or it actually makes it harder sometimes. But this is a really easy way for us to give you a full environment, right? Which includes Pegasus, it includes uh, Condor and, and, and operations underneath it, right? So that's like a whole package deal for you. The, the other thing I should say is um, Jupyter here, the Jupyter notebook part is also optional. And we're going to use this to, um, to, to demo Pegasus, but most of our users, well, they just use a command line or they use the, the APIs maybe directly on their submit node. Uh, the Jupyter notebook, it's a nice presentation layer. Uh, you can use it in production, but it's again, uh, optional, uh, optional um, component of this. Um, so the first part, so when, when you end up in this tutorial, and the other thing I should say also is that if you run into problems here, go and, uh, and ask on Slack, uh, we will do, either we'll answer it right there, or we will do um, um, uh, maybe even a breakout if you get really stuck. So, so we'll, we'll deal with the issues. We can interrupt me at any given time. And you know, just turn on your mic and and said and and and, and interrupt me, and, and we'll stop there. So uh, the first section and, and that the tutorial itself. Now, 
most people should see this here. They should see something like this. All right. Uh, if you were able to get here, great. You are where, where we need to be. If you're struggling, let us know and we will uh, we'll get, get, get help to you. Actually, let's use a little bit of uh, Zoom features. Can, don't we have the thumbs up on this one? Yeah, people could um, say. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. there you go. <laughs> right, okay. So if, if you have reached this part, why don't you do a thumbs up and I'll, I'll try to see, get a little bit of bad feedback here. If you don't know, it's just reactions at the bottom uh, sure. bar in Zoom. Good, yeah, I see a few. Okay, good. Um, all right, and so there are currently four sections of this uh, of this tutorial. We're going to start here with the introduction API, the number one. Uh, let me see, chats. Okay, so we'll start with the, the first one here. And you will probably see a few more, but click on the, the zero one introduction API, uh, IPI notebook and you will see the first notebook opening up okay so <clears throat> i've been mentioning that this is self-guided mostly the stuff that you need is actually in this tutorial i mean you can just read along and 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 basically run each shell one after another and it will will take you uh, along uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the graphs uh, while while you uh, kind of explore this. This is the video we played earlier today. And uh, we talked about the container uh, and, and the Jupyter uh, being optional. So let's just talk a little bit about what the workflow we're going to be using today and how that is um, structured. So where am I? Come on up. All right, so first, this is a, a, a very simple workflow. We probably use this for you know 18 out of our 20 years. Uh, usually we have it flipped, but this is, is just another representation of it, of, of it. And what we have here is that the, the circles, well, those are tools or processes that we need to do, and uh, command lines, right? And the squares here is data that we're tracking. and and the. One thing to realize here is that Pegasus, as it's executing, is tracking all your data. So data, it needs to be aware of the data. It needs to uh, know where data is used as outputs or inputs. And by doing that, then that's part of this planning process that we heard multiple times about today, that, that Pegasus can make uh, smart decisions about data placement or data management based on, on that, that information. So we'll, uh, this is the workflow we'll run. We'll run it multiple times here. And, and uh, at some point we'll see, we'll create this first file. This will be an input to the workflow. And then we'll see the workflow create the other files for us. Um, the, the other thing that we're going to talk about, and especially here in the first section is these catalogs. So um, at a really high level, all the input to, to Pegasus as well is a workflow, it's a DAG, right? So it's a direct a cycle graph where we have a set of processes that we are uh, have, have dependencies between each other. Uh, however, this in Pegasus is abstract in the sense that it's not a resource specific, right? So there's no information encoded in this workflow that uh, tells tells it where data to find data, or where to find software, or where to where to actually execute. So what we need as inputs to Pegasus is a workflow, but we also need extra information. So we need a site catalog, and this is what describes our execution environment. We need a transformation catalog, and this is what describes our um, um, software and our our tooling that we need to execute. And last thing we need is a replica catalog, which is locations of inputs that 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 we will want to pass into this workflow. And, and you know, there could be multiple inputs; they could be remote or they can be local. So, so um, this replica catalog is something to um, pay attention to, especially if you have a, a, a bigger workflow in the future. 
And what Pegasus does, it takes the information from these three catalogs, it takes that abstract workflow, and uh, that's the input to the planning process. So with all that, we have all the information we need to make an executable workflow. And usually that ends up looking, you know, it looks different from the abstract workflow, right? It looks like uh, uh, most of the time it's, it's larger, but it could be smaller as well. It could be reduced to if there's unnecessary steps in there. But in this case, what, what ended up happening is that the planning process ended up some uh, adding uh, uh, jobs up here uh, for uh, a staging process and as a workflow setup, a uh, directory setup job, staging the data in, um, and at the end there's stage out and data cleanup. And in between here, right, like you see there's like an extra circle around these jobs. Well, there's a little bit of, of Pegasus wrapper around your, your code. This is to you know, collect provenance data and to data staging maybe, and to set up an, uh, the environment for that job. And, and that's what that, that little extra ring indicates. So at this point, uh, uh, we are ready to run our first uh, um, workflow or stepping through to, to get to that point, I should say. So let's uh, together, uh, let's do the notebook. Right, and as I said, what, what you want to do is um, the Jupyter notebook. The way that that's set up is there are all these cells, and there's one after another. So, uh, and if, what we're going to do is run them in order, and you can even run the text one. So this is just like uh, you know a description, but you still hit run for each one. So now I hit run, and it will go to the next one. Right. And it will also indicate with this little number up here. No, it doesn't. Okay, we'll, we'll see in the next step here. This one we'll see here. And so the first thing that, that we want to do in the, in the tutorial is to have a quick introduction to the Python API. And we do have other APIs. We do have a Java one and we do have an R one. And these, the, the Python one is the one that's mostly used though. And it's also the most powerful one because it includes <clears throat> um, extra functionality, for example, for submitting and monitoring the workflow, and not just only to, to define the workflow. So, uh, so um, there's a link to the full reference guide. There's a little bit of a hierarchy here, what, what what's available in this, in this uh, API. But really what most people want to do is just import it. Is this big enough for people? I don't think so. Okay, maybe there. Okay, so, uh, so here we have our first cell with code. And if we click run on that, what will happen is, okay, now it gave us a number that means that it ran it. And I wonder if I did this wrong. Yeah, I did. I want to clear mine out again. Uh, clear all. Okay. Let's step down here again. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we're fine. We'll we'll figure it out as we go. Um, so that just imports the whole API into into your your script. And this uh, this first chapter is broken up, right? So we'll step through the different steps in different uh, in different cells. When we get to chapter two in the in the tutorial, we'll see kind of the complete workflow, the complete complete code in one cell, and it will be. Uh, you get a better overview in that, that sense. Um, in this cell, we're just importing logging or configuring logging. Uh, this, if you're using a command line, you don't really need to do this, but uh, here in Jupyter Notebook, it's, it's uh, a nice step to do. And now here we get to the first kind of input that we need to for Pegasus. And this is the properties. In this case, we have a little bit extra properties for sharing data with the, the Pegasus developers. What this does is sends extra data into um, the, the kind of umbrella monitoring tool that, that Pegasus has. And so these two here are optional. Like you don't have that in your workflow. We appreciate if you do it because it gives us a little bit more data, for example, for you know, for debugging or for funding agencies and things like that, but it's not something that that you have to do to, to run workflows. And this mode here, tutorial, it's a special mode that tells Pegasus to kind of 
uh, speed up and don't spend, uh, you know, don't, don't, for example, uh, if there's an error, don't do a lot of retries and things like that. That would, that's very useful for a production workflow. In, in a tutorial workflow, we want fast feedback. We won't be able to move people along that, that, and I think we've heard several, you know, talks today kind of saying, okay, debugging can be slow or, um, or that, you know, I have a really short job. I wish that Pegasus was a little bit faster about it. So this mode here just gives you a little bit speed up, but again, for a, 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 a production workflow, don't use that. And then we're just writing it out and it goes to this default file name here. The other thing you can do is listing the properties that are in the system. And this is kind of, you know, it's useful if you just want to see, okay, what are the ones that has to do with like condo requests, for example. So this is a way that you can specify CPU, disk, GPUs, and memory that, that your workflow need. It's a little bit of a kind of self-describing API that way. Yeah, so that's what done with the, the Pegasus properties file. And one of the things also to note here, Peg, uh, Karen, when he talked about this this morning, he said, we have worked hard on zero configuration here. All this stuff that's in here is optional, right? You could actually run without this file at all, but uh, for uh, tutorial purposes, uh, we, it's better if you do it. Um, okay, so let's step down. Let's get to the next thing. And that is the, and actually before, before I go on, any questions so far? All right, do I go too fast or too slow? Uh, perfect placement. All right, good. Um, all right, so here we have the, the first catalog, and this is the replica catalog. This is probably the one that, uh, you know, you will spend most time modifying. And the reason for that is that the site catalog and the, and the transformation catalog, once you have them figured out, they're fairly static, right? It's not, the execution environment doesn't change very often, maybe, or, or your, uh, uh, the software stack you're using is pretty static. And the replica catalog though, it's pretty common that this changes for each workflow you're running. And uh, an example uh, uh, is that you have um, uh, a workflow that does a data find step or, or you, know, you have a new set, new director of input files, well, which means that the replica catalog needs to be updated. In, in this case, uh, if you remember the picture that we had earlier, we only have one file that we need to worry about and this is this input file. <clears throat> so um, we're just going to create it. So we write it here. Uh, again, input data doesn't have to be created by the workflow, but it can, right? Uh, by the, the workflow generation step. So in this case, we're just going to generate a file and then we're going to use it when, when we create the replica. So we'll create that file by running the step. And um, so the next thing we need is starting this replica catalog. And again, this is all in the, in the Python API. So we're going to uh, get the replica catalog object. We're going to add a replica. And in this case, it's going to be a local file. Um, we, we just need a, a, a you know, handle to the file name up here. Uh, and we're also going to say where to find it, like a local path. <clears throat> the, this too to Pegasus, this is one of the really powerful components of Pegasus, right? Is that you don't have to have data local. So you could say, okay, I actually have a file that's on HTTP or it's on, you know, Cybers or it's somewhere else. And Pegasus will figure out the way to grab that file for you. <clears throat> it might ask you for credentials or, uh, you know, maybe we'll do a, a two-step staging for you. But the point is that Pegasus does it for you, right? So um, it's a, be able to kind of remotely pull in files is, is a really, really uh, powerful part here. And again, we're going to write it, which goes to, again, another um, default file name. And we're going to look at these a little bit later, but for now, we're just going to assume that that's a file that's been written somewhere. Oh, already here, we're going to cat it. Okay, so we're just going to, to uh, show what the content is. And um, it's all YAML. And this, this 
the YAML part here is new. If you haven't used, uh, or if you have used Pegasus before 5.0, these were other formats. Uh, there was a replica text format, for example, that was, uh, I mean, it looked like a, um, um, you know, white space separated file. And in this case, uh, but, but for consistency, the formats have all been moved over to YAML for, for Pegasus 5.0. And we can see now that, okay, this is the file that was generated by, by the API. You could generate this file by yourself as well. I mean, it doesn't have to be the API, but it's, it's a nice way of doing it. And so we can see here again, it's a local file. There's a, a PFN, a, a physical file name. So this is the actual full location that we can find it on the file system. And there's some metadata that was added by, by for good measures. This is something that will come back in, um, uh, and uh, uh, you, know, you can do, for example, um, uh, also things like, like checksums and other things here. There's a bunch of metadata. We add some of them automatically. You will see that when the workflow creates files, it adds a lot of metadata. And when we create them here, or when we just list them in the workflow's inputs, all we added here was a creator and it's tracked all through the workflow as it executes. All right, so that was replica, and uh, let's move on to the next catalog, which is the transformation catalog. And in this case, uh, um, we will uh, we will use a tool called Pegasus Keg. This is used for demoing, and we're going to use it for all these different. So we want a, a, a process called preprocess, and it's using this file names. So they're all using the same file name. Don't get too hung up on that. They are different processes with different arguments, but we are specific, like we are describing it here. We are describing it as something that exists in the file system already. Like it's not stageable. It's already ready for us to use. And the architecture and OS, this is only really important if you're doing uh, multi-site submissions and things like that, but for good measures, Let's be explicit and, and tell, tell Pegasus what, where, where they are and what they are. And so in this case, we have these three processes uh, and these are mapping. I'm going to go back to the picture up here very, very quickly. Let me show you, All right? So what we're doing is we're defining this here, pre-process, the executable that we need for this. We uh, define the executable for this and for ana analyze. But what you did see is that we only had three, right? So we're using, this, we're using the same software for these two. And, and that's, again, you know, if you want to run a million uh, node workflows, there's a good chance that you're using the same software over and over again. So <clears throat> that only goes into transformation catalog once, and then you re reference it in the jobs. That's not where we want to go. We want to go here. All right. So again, three of them, find range will be used twice in that workflow. Uh, and the last thing we do, well, we create the transformation uh, catalog object. We add this three to it and we write it out again to a default file name. So there we go. And we can look at this, uh, look at the, the uh, created YAML for it. It looks almost like replica catalog. I don't know if you kind of see that, but there is a, 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 a location in this case, Condropool, which is the execution environment. We'll see that. And um, location, if it's installed or not, and architecture. Now, in the other picture I had, uh, this picture, <clears throat> we talked about that there's three catalogs. And so far we have done replica catalog and we have done transformation catalog. The third one here, the site catalog, we're not going to do. This, this is, uh, uh, we're using a default one that's created by Pegasus and uh, which works fine if you have a condo pool you're running on. We don't need to uh, do anything special in that case. So let's just jump ahead and, uh, and define a workflow. Uh, let's see here. 
Right. So now, uh, depending on on you know your particular workflow, this will look different, right? Like there will be different loops or different um, functions and things like that that you need to do. But a typical job, for example, right, is that we have to be specific. We have inputs and outputs to, to uh, input and output files to jobs. We create a job object. We add some arguments. Okay. We add some inputs. Oh, come on now. There we go. All right. We add some inputs, we add some outputs. And also note that this API is, is, you know, it's a huge improvement from the Pegasus 4 API. For example, you know, you can just do a list here, right? Like you can just list output files. It, in, in the old Pegasus, you had to kind of be very, you know, it was like one item every time and, and, and uh, it was you know, more annoying. We can also add specific environments. We can do X specific uh, profiles. And these are kind of settings that are specific to jobs or to uh, sites and things like that. And then we add a job to the workflow. Now, so this is that snippet and we'll, we'll run this as well. And what we'll end up with here at the end is a workflow object, right? Um, <clears throat> So this here is a representation of that. There's a pre-process job. There's the two find range jobs and the analyze jobs. And you see how we track the outputs, right? So the input to the first one is f.a, the outputs to the second one, fb1, fb2, just like we had in that picture. So now we've described this workflow and we are getting to the fun part of running it. So um, again, this, um, just like I said, in Jupyter Notebook is optional. When you run, run your workflow, you can run it from inside uh, Python, or you can submit it from inside Python. And uh, again, this is optional. So in, a, in a, I think section two, we're going to do it with command line. No, section three, we're going to do it with command line instead. Um, so let's run this. And this takes a few moments. Uh, what you will see is two steps that we are collapsed into one. We have the plan step and we have the submit step. So the planning step is what you're seeing the output coming out right now. And, and basically Pegasus says we planned it, we created a directory for it, and we, when we submitted it, so now it's actually running here behind the scenes. And there's a little progress bar here that shows us <clears throat> what, what, what's going on with the workflow. And this handle here is important. The reason we do the file system here is that, um, that we want a handle to workflow that, that uh, is valid before and after it actually is running, right? So we're working with this workflow before in the sense that we are defining it and, <clears throat> and we are you know, building it up. And once the workflow stopped running, we still want a handle to it because we want to be able to check status. We want to do, you know, analyze it and pull statistics. And this kind of this directory here is the handle for all those tools. Uh, currently, you know, this is inside uh, Juba Notebook, but we'll see it again in the, in the command line section and how we interact with these. So this output here where it says to monitor this workflow, you can run Pegasus status command. Yeah, we are going to do that, but not right now. Right now, we're just going to wait for this to finish. And we are going to um, um, to move on from, from that. So again, thumbs up. How many people got to running this workflow? Like, is, or is it running or done for you? There's a few, good. Hey, is there anybody that needs help or have questions? Uh, I do have one quick question. Yeah, go for um, it. So I, actually two quick questions. So firstly, if you don't call plan like within the workflow, will it just run it in the background? Like, you know, yeah. through the kernel or something? Right, you get the, just like you did for catalogs, you get the uh, YAML file that describes the workflow. Okay, and then one other one is with respect to the replica catalog, 
Um, you, you mentioned you could point like a remote URL to it, but it's still presumably a file, right? Right. Like, yeah. So, and that's a good point. Like, so, so Pegasus is all, you know, it's a DAG and it's files, right? There's no streaming or anything going on. And, and the other thing to note about this is are, they are immutable. So one of the things that we, that's not allowed in Pegasus is, is changing files that already exist. So, and this is a common, common question that we get. So let's look at this workflow here, right? Let's say that this preprocess here, it wants to create a file that's called f.a. And that's not allowed because we already have an f.a, right? And it's not allowed for two reasons. One is obviously, you know, we, it has to be a unique name. But, but you're not allowed to change anything either, right? Like, so once this file exists in this workflow, it's the assumption is that it, it will never change again, right? That makes sense. So like, for example, if you're saying, uh, if it's a, a URL that streams data, no, not allowed. You have to kind of pull it down, have it as a file and then pass it along in the workflow. And that's the only way that we can actually track this data, right? If it was an undeterministic, um, piece of data, then we couldn't do the tracking that we're doing. Yep, got it. Does this make sense? Yep, it's just a timing thing really. Like, um, you know, it, you basically, you may want to plan, but the data, the input data could be changing during the planning process. And so like what I do is I actually have the, you know, the actual processes now retrieve the data to make sure it's the latest data. Mm. But ideally, I would almost like to point to a URL, you know, an endpoint basically that streamed out the data at the last minute and then had Pegasus distributed from there. Yeah, I mean, you can, I, it's just, you know, we can't guarantee what, what, that, what that does. Like, you know, I mean, what, like, for example, what happens if you get partial data, right? But if there's no check whatsoever, and, and probably in your case, what I would do is maybe have a, a job in a workflow where, 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 where does that pull and the validation and everything, you know, adds metadata maybe so that you can understand, you know, what happened afterwards, things like timestamps or, or you know, data source so that you can you, you understand. You have that kind of extra provenance data if you need to kind of go back and, and, and rerun it to figure out what happened. Yep, makes sense, thanks. Uh, Okay, so mine is 100% success. Um, okay, so Connor has a question. Just to clarify, the plan stage generates a DAG workflow submits to, submits to that server. Yes. <clears throat> and so be behind here is a Condor instance. It is going to be more clear when we do the command line because we're going to let, get our hands a little bit more dirty at that point. But yeah, there's a Condor instance. We made this workflow. We handed it off to Condor. Condor ran these jobs, the 17 jobs that was actually required. And now it's telling that it's done. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so let's go down. And so here is one of the, the cool things that we can do with that provenance data that we collect. So if you run this, this cell, it will generate statistics for this workflow run. And uh, there is a whole section about here describing or the definition of these different uh, pieces of data. Um, so in this case, it says <clears throat> that we had, we had four initial tasks and we have 17 jobs. The difference here, right, is the extra jobs that was added to the, the, the workflow. So these are the data staging jobs or data um, uh, you know, clean up jobs, whatever it's needed to, to do a full execution of these four tasks. So the tasks here are uh, what the, you know, the user had in, in their abstract workflow. The 17 jobs is what ended up in the executable workflow. Uh, in this case, all good, no, uh, no retries or anything. So it's all clean. It gives us runtime. So it took two minutes to run this or three minutes basically. If we add up the time uh, for the jobs, like without all the kind of overhead and things like that, it's, it's a, a minute 12. And <clears throat> there's a little bit of an integrity uh, section here where it's talking about, uh, you know, how many times did we do uh, file checksumming and, 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 and generating checksums, uh, all good, no errors found, right? So that it ran cleanly. 
and we get this nice uh, um, statistics output at the end. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the second uh, uh, notebook. And the way you do that is you just click Jupyter Notebook up here, the Jupyter logo. Uh, it will take you back to your, um, your um, folder with all the notebooks. And let's create the second one. And I actually have a problem here. That. Ah, crap. Okay, nobody look right now. Well, I'm going to do this actually. So this is what you get for testing your stuff beforehand. There we go. So um, you start the second one, the zero two debugging, the IPython notebook. Um, it's the same as the first one. <clears throat> We're just going to step through it. We're doing the same workflow. So we'll stop, uh, we'll start just running them um, it's called cell by cell. And here's this one where I told you like all these steps, the, the broken up steps that we had in the first section, here they are in one kind of source file. So we can see uh, kind of logically how to lay this out. If, if you want to start to create your first workflow, this, you know, you can just copy and paste this one. We're creating properties, replicas, transformations, the actual workflow, and, um, and then we accept running it. So I'm going to run it again. Um, right. Okay, then we planned it. Now we're going to run it just like we did the first time. All right, and we have to wait a little bit of time. This is where that uh, property, the, the tutorial property is really helpful. And so how are we doing on time here? Are, are we running, ending at 1.30 or no? Wendy? Yeah, I, I think you could take maybe 10 more minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, good. All right, um, all right, so we're running this workflow. Um, it should be pretty quick here. See the state is running. If you see where my um, cursor is, okay, come on now. So what we're waiting for is actually a failure here. Ah, here we go. See, now there's one that's failed here. And we're going to wait for it to go into failure state. So <clears throat> the point here is that now there's something wrong with this workflow and we're going to fix it. We're going to see how do you do debugging or like this, a, a quick debugging on a Pegasus workflow and how do you recover from a failure? So the first thing we want to do is there is a cool tool called Analyze with Pegasus. You can do it in Python like this, or you can, there's also a command line version of it. So when we run this, what it will do is it will take a failed workflow and it will give you a hint on what went wrong. So we'll go and run this. And in the output here, it will say, here's a list of failed jobs and, and why they failed. So in this case, there's a staging job that failed. And here's some details about where the job is the output files and stuff if you want to really dig into it. <clears throat> but then it says, okay, here, here's, here's the output of this why it failed. And in this case, it's uh, transfer jobs. There's a little bit of goo here about transfers, but there's an error line in here. And what it says is that that file that you told me, there was an input, f.a, 
<clears throat> it doesn't exist at that location. Uh, you told me where it was. That's not where it is. And you know, I can't I can't continue if I if I don't have this file. So the fix now here is you know it, like two one or two things could have happened. One is you specify the wrong path. You know, maybe you did a typo or something, and it's not not there. Or um, you know, you you specified maybe a, a file that um, that uh, that that shouldn't exist, right? But in this case, what ended up happening is we actually just misspelled it. So in if we scroll all the way back up to the the definition of workflow, in here there is uh, <clears throat> we're creating this file. And we're creating it with the wrong file name, right? So uh, we're creating it file with the uh, file name f dot problem with a, and then we say, well, it exists as f dot a. So this is the mismatch, right? So in this case, it's easy to fix. Uh, um, you know, we'll, all we're going to do is we're going to move the file, the the, the problem file, into the right location, and then the cool part here is that we can just restart this workflow where it left off. We don't have to, you know, replan it or, you know, start over or anything like that. The Pegasus workflows can start, uh, like, you know, if they can't make progress, they will stop. And then you can pick up, fix the problems and pick up from where it left off. And it doesn't have to be problems like this. This could be problems like, let's say in the execution environment, you're running on a cluster that is under maintenance. The workflow comes to stop. When that cluster comes back up, you can just, you know, give it the run command again, and it will pick up where it left off. It's less obvious in small workflows like this, but if you have some big workflows, yeah, that that's a really valuable tool because you don't have to redo a, a lot of compute. So, uh, so that's the debugging, and and this analyze tool <clears throat> is not only for internal, right? If you had your code, if you had plugged in your code here and it exited with, with a non-zero exit code or something, it didn't generate a file that expected, Pegasus would still catch that and it would still show you that information. So in that case, instead of this uh, Pegasus output, it would be output from your code saying, you know, whatever the error was, right? So it's, it's, it's catching all this. Um, <clears throat> let's quickly move on to the third module. Uh, again, go up to Jupiter. Okay. And select uh, number three, command line tools. Start that one. And if you if you you know feel like we're going too fast now, we can go back and you can run this by yourself. <clears throat> you can use these URLs for at least a couple of weeks. We're gonna leave it up running so you can play here. You don't have to run the Docker one if you don't want to. So in this case, we're going to, uh, just like before, we're go creating the same workflow over again. And the difference here is <clears throat> that once we have this, we're going to write it out to disk. So at this point, we have defined a workflow, but we have not started it or we haven't planned it or any of that stuff yet. What we're going to do once you have this step where it says it has has run this 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 um, cell, uh, go back again, click the Jupiter uh, Jupiter um, uh, logo, <clears throat> and this time we're going to go over here to the right, and there's a new. Uh, terminal. So you, you drop down the new button. Uh, from Dino, yes, it's safe. You can just go ahead and leave it. It's fine. Running them in parallel is fine. Um, so new, and you go to terminal, and what you will end up here with is uh, <clears throat> a Linux terminal, uh, which is the, um, you know, the terminal behind this Jupyter notebook. And um, it's it's good if you have both of them open, actually. I mean, if you want to, it's it's because the, oh, no, 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 no. Um, because you still have the instructions in this one. 
So you can have two different tabs. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to cd into uh, to the notebooks 03 command line tools. So it's cd notebooks 03 command line tools. Right? And what we'll find in here is <clears throat> um, just what we have been creating the whole time, the Pegasus properties file, we have F to A, we have a workflow, right? So we haven't seen this one before. This is the first time we're actually looking at this. This is the YAML that has everything in here. And one of the things that we did not see here, right? Like if you look here, we are questioning, okay, where's the replica catalog? Where's the transformation catalog? Well, in this case, we just wrote them right into the Pegasus workflow. So there's a section about the transformation catalog. There's a section for replica catalog. And then we have the jobs, which is actually a graph, right? All right now, once we have that, we can use the command line tools to um, do exactly what we've been doing so far today. So the first one we're going to try is Pegasus plan, dash dash submit, and then workflow.yaml. So that is Pegasus plan, dash dash submit, and then workflow.yaml. Okay. This output here should look very familiar to you. This is the same one as we had that we saw earlier today with, um, with the commands. What's nice about this is that now we can you know, copy and paste this one, for example, the pegs to status one, uh, we can copy and paste and it will give us the details of, of where this workflow is doing. <clears throat> you get a little bit more information here. And this is the base director of that workflow. You will see a list of jobs. So if you keep on running this, it will change, right? So up here, we had a creator job. Here it's done already. So you see the percentage moved up a little bit. I run it again. There's also a dash W one here, where it keeps on running it over and over again. Right? So it's the same command, takes the status. All I did was add a dash W. Right? And we'll see that the job's kind of running here. This is going quickly, but but that's that's basically it. Um, in in the uh, you know to save some time, I'm not going to wait, and I'm not going to do the statistics one. What I want to do is just go to the fourth one, and you don't have to do this. You can just listen to me. The fourth one is just a little bit of a summary and and uh, an overview of of where to move from from here. So what we have is um, a few things I want to point out, and it's probably mentioned a couple of times today. Uh, but one is what support channels are there for, for Pegasus, right? So there are um, um, a couple of mailing lists. There's a Pegasus users, which is a general discussion forum. You can post your questions there or comment, you know, if you want to have the mailing list interaction. There is an announce list that, that you get added to uh, over time. And that's where we do things like new releases or events like this. And there's also a, a private one that's called Pegasus Support. And this is not mailing list, it just goes to the developers. The reason we have this is that let's say that you wanna ask about something that you know, is, is not maybe something you can do publicly, right? It could be credentials or, or something in your workflow that you don't want to give hints to uh, people outside the collaboration and things like that. So, so that's another um, support channel. <clears throat> the one that's not listed here that is new now is that Pegasus user Slack. We are using that for uh, obviously for this meeting, but we're going to leave it here and it's going to be a general support channel. Uh, so go in there and ask questions and, and, and you will um, get help from, from developers as well. We do have uh, 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 something called office hours. Really, this is a quick presentation where we take a topic of Pegasus, we can spend some time on it, and then we leave uh, 
half of the meeting or so open to just discussion and, <clears throat> and questions. And another thing I would like you to consider, and especially if you, when you start publishing work that you have used Pegasus to, to generate, is to for citing and acknowledging Pegasus. And this is on the Pegasus website. You can find this easily if you just go Pegasus ISIDU. But there's a preferred way of citing Pegasus or acknowledging it uh, with the grant numbers and things like that. And then the last thing of this is <clears throat> if you want to give talks and you have and you want you just need to kind of add in an overview slide of what is Pegasus. Uh, you know, to your institution, your collaboration or something. There's a generic one also available in the website that you can just copy and paste in and, and you don't have to kind of generate it yourself. So with that, I'm going to end the tutorial. Uh, I'm going to stick around a little bit for longer if you have questions um, and, uh, you know, anytime, but, but if you have questions now, I'm, I'm going to be here for another 10 minutes or so. So thank you for listening and let me know if you have any questions. Anything? There were some questions which were in the chat which we addressed Mads, as you were right. speaking. I have a quick overarching question. Yeah. So this seems like it really is an abstraction from a Dagman style workflow in terms of like OSG workflows. Um, that's primarily what I work with. Yeah. Is it better to use Pegasus and all the pieces built through, you know, to simplify it essentially, or is it still preferable to just build the DAG files yourself? And I don't know, maybe be a little bit more hands-on with the workflow. So it is a preference, and, and I will also say, like, it depends a little bit of, for example, data management and things like that, right? So if we go in here and we look at this workflow, uh, sorry, like this one where we uh, where we ran it, I'm going to seed into this one, copy, and then paste. Oh, where's it? Uh, zero two. All right, what you will find in here, right? This is what, what Pegasus generated. This is executable workflow. And one of the things that you will find, right, is that it's a DAG. So, so Pegasus is an abstraction for DAG, just as you figured out. If we look at this one, I mean, it's a pretty complex DAG, even for our simple, simple workflow with four nodes, there's, it looks more complex than maybe you would, write, would want to write by hand. But, but really where, where this shines on OSG, for example, is um, data transfers. So you can obviously write jobs and you can write um, DAGs that do, you know, do the data management and, and shipping and stuff by yourself. <clears throat> but uh, the easier way is really to use Pegasus here and just let, let Pegasus deal with that. And you work on kind of describing the workflow you want to run, not how it's being run. That makes sense. Yes, and uh, you know, like another uh, reason it might be like you know, Matt, I'm not sure you refer to the data cleanup uh, feature, which you know is very beneficial to uh, users when they start running. Mm. Uh, so that's something which you just get automatically with Pegasus. But you know, as Matt mentioned, it's uh, your style of preference. Though you know, with Pegasus, we are trying to give you portability in terms of insulating you from the underlying execution environment. So let's say you're developing for OSG and later on for whatever reason you need to uh, set up your pipeline to run on your local campus cl cluster. So you know that you have to do some tweaking which is easier in Pegasus in terms of moving from one environment to another. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm having, I'm giving a talk on Thursday <clears throat> about Pegasus and, and OSG and why that is a good match. So that's something that you might want to attend. It's just a 10 minute one, but that's, uh, uh, you know, um, give you a little bit overview. I think what Karen is also saying is that 
because it's a higher level, um, uh, you know, an abstraction here, is that there are features that 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 you might not be thinking about. So there's things like like the data cleanup, like as we go, we'll clean up unnecessary data and, and keep the footprint smaller. And we'll obviously do data transfers. <clears throat> A uh, fairly new feature is that, uh, and it was in 4.9, but uh, but it's really been kind of fine-tuned in 5, uh, is uh, integrity. So the whole time we're running the workflow, we do integrity data checks, right? And, and that is important if you have a you know, large number of, of transfers, like open science grid. And it's, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for like a small error to creep into one of the files. And having Pegasus kind of manage that for you and make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, you know, there's small features like that, but they all, all kind of add up to, to something that, um, that's, you know, adds a lot of value, I think. Perfect. Thank you for the response. Yeah, we keep on saying tomorrow. There's I know. nothing tomorrow. <laughs> it's all yeah, Thursday. So that's <laughs> what I wanted to say um, before everybody, you know, says goodbye today. That tomorrow is nothing. There's a break, and then on Thursday, uh, starting at the same time, uh, we'll just have a brief like logistics meeting, and then we'll kick off the the rest of the talks. So definitely tune into Matt's talk um, tomorrow. I gave you the right time for that. <laughs> or Thursday. Oh my God. <laughs> I could just fall off a cliff. Okay. You have an electric shock every time you see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for attending. I think we'll stop there and uh, and we'll just uh, again see you again we'll soon. Yeah, we'll be on the track, right? So you know, we, we'll 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 be here tomorrow. Yes, and, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Use Slack for sure. If you if you think of anything, any other questions, and if they haunt your dreams just put it on slack and we'll be able to to get to you and we'll even incorporate it in, in thursday's talks if we can <laughs> <laughs>